Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and I'm standing in front of a brand new Summit TX25. And you guys all know me as a John Deere guy, so what am I doing with this? Well, I apologize if the title is a little bit clickbait, but I did not sell my tractor and get this. But I'm here with the guy who did, and I want to find out why. So this is my friend Brian. He's uh, just started his own YouTube channel called McClure Made Outdoors. And I shot a video with him maybe a month ago with his John Deere 2025R. And we did a comparison between my 2038 and the 2025. And now just a couple weeks later, he sent me a message, said he sold his John Deere and bought this Summit. And that really had me intrigued. I've seen these at the local Atwoods, but I was itching to get a chance to operate one. So let's start here, Brian. What made you want this tractor when you already had a John Deere with the same horsepower? Well, some of it was just looking into, you know, the different features that I wanted. I already added on the grapple feature for mine, but this came standard on this one, but I really wanted the rear hydraulics. Mm -hmm. And so this one already had it on it. So, well, there's a plus. Yeah. So, and then this one's already got the, it's got filled tires in the back. So that added about 900 to a thousand pounds. So it was a lot heavier of a tractor. Yeah. And I would say when you see a new tractor and it's a 25 horse, the impulse is to compare it to like a 1025 or a Kubota BX, but that's not the size of tractor we have here. It's closer to a 2025 or maybe even a 3025 from Deer. And if you guys watch a lot of tractor content online, you've already seen Goodworks Tractors. He has a sponsorship deal with Summit Tractors and has showed all these features and showed the tractors a lot of times. But I think it's always nice to get an unbiased review from an owner. Now, I can't do a review today because it's a new tractor. So we can only share the initial impressions we have of it. And the review comes over time. So to start with, the initial pros and cons. Pro is cost. This is a very uh, well-priced tractor for the size and horsepower that this is under $20,000. And I think you're gonna have a hard time beating that price in today's market for a tractor this size. And the next thing is that at that price, you get a bunch of features standard like he already mentioned. It comes with the loaded tires, comes with third function on the front, it comes with a rear remote hydraulic, it's got an air ride seat, it's just a lot of features you wouldn't expect at this price. So that's very tempting. The downside to it is they don't have this big established dealer network that you already know and trust. So in your mind, how do you get past that as a, as a hurdle to buying? I know when I bought my John Deere, it was nice because John Deere was just right down the road. But just looking at sort of how they're going to do things, it looks like most any place that they're going to start selling these tractors, they're going to start training staff to be able to work on them there. But right now, I bought this in Joplin, Missouri, but as of right now, the closest place for me to actually get it worked on is probably near Rogers or Benito, Oklahoma. And I always do say that getting a good dealer that provides support is a big deal, but also most of the guys I've talked to aren't taking their tractor in all the time for work. I mean, how many times did you take your 25, 2025 in to be worked on by the dealer? Probably only once to actually get it worked on, then just the second time was just routine maintenance, so. Yeah, I have uh, I bought a maintenance package with mine and I kind of regretted buying it because I'd rather do my own maintenance. And so I won't be buying that on any future tractors, but I've took mine in for some broken bolts and that was it. So. It is something to keep in mind, but there's a lot to offer in this price range. So my first impressions running it was there's a little bit of slop in the steering system in the front that it wasn't quite as responsive as I'm used to. Also, it's got a little bit of coast. When you accelerate forward or reverse, it doesn't stop as quickly as mine. And a lot of you guys can probably relate to this if you've got a hydrostat tractor, is I hardly ever push the brake pedal unless I'm sitting on a hill or something. And mostly, you just stop by letting off your, your pedal. And uh, with this, I found myself either needing to let off quicker or to actually use the brake to stop. 
And another thing that I thought was kind of becoming standard is auto throttle. So like on my tractor, when I push the pedal, it automatically throttles up to match how hard I'm pushing the pedal. That's a setting you can turn on and off. If you want to control the throttle manually, you can, but 90% of activities I run with that auto throttle. And I noticed this didn't have it, but then I found out that your 2025 didn't have that either. So what are your first impressions? Now, we're actually gonna do another follow-up video because he has a really cool stump grinder that I've never seen. Mostly on YouTube, you see the same stump grinders over and over again, and he has one that I think will be an interesting comparison to mine, and we're gonna have that video coming up, running his stump grinder on this tractor and mine on, on my tractor. But what are your first thoughts running this compared to the 2025? I haven't really had it too long, but I mean, one of the main things I notice, I mean, when you got an extra thousand pounds of weight, you're definitely gonna notice it. So that was one thing I noticed just even driving it, even in high gear really quick and stuff. It's just the stability that it had, so. And that's a big thing to me because the first thing, if I bought a new tractor today, the very first thing, probably before even running it, is saying, how can I cheaply add weight to this? And so this looks like the same size tractor, but weighs like a thousand pounds more. Yeah, yep. so that was nice having that. But one of the things, I mean, I didn't really care too much about, it is a little bit smaller of a area control station or whatever. Feels a little bit more crammed, just the initial feel of it. But. And I, that, it looks like that to me, and he mentioned it, but I didn't notice it being too bad getting on and off. Yeah, that's not terrible. I do like the suspension seat on it. Another one that we forgot to mention is these tires. The, this, I'm going to mess up the terminology, but this is like a hybrid tire. And these are an expensive option. If I wanted to put these tires on my tractor, it would cost me a lot of money. In my case, I think I would have to buy different rims, but he's got those standard. I don't know if, is, if they call that like a VersaTurf or what they're calling that. Yeah, just a hybrid style. Yeah, but that's another thing you're getting kind of a premium tire on an economy tractor. As we were going over the pros and cons, I forgot to mention two things that are pretty big positives on this tractor or selling points. Number one is the self-leveling loader. And previous to Summit, I thought my 2038R was the smallest tractor I'd seen anywhere that had a self-leveling loader. I'm a big fan of those, and I, I'm so used to it, I almost forgot that this has one. The other thing is the standard third function, which we briefly mentioned, but most manufacturers are not offering that as a standard feature. The fill cap for your diesel is right here. Not crazy about hood mounted, but at least it's off to the side. It's got a removable loader with kickstands, which is bare minimum expected anymore. You know, 10 years ago, that was more like a premium feature. Now, almost any tractor is going to have a removable loader. And of course, you've got the skid steer quick attach bucket, which I actually, I prefer the John Deere quick attach, but I've said in a previous video, I wish John Deere would switch to this because you're causing an inconvenience to people who own or have access to multiple brands. So Brian has a family member with a Bobcat tractor and he had the John Deere. They could not share front end attachments. That's, to me, that's kind of a big negative towards John Deere. And now Brian has existing attachments like his Artillion that he has to find a way to make work on this. So to me, this is better. Another cool little thing here I would have told you was a gimmick is putting these hood mounted rear view mirrors, but from Brian's experience and me just now using it, I really see how this could have a benefit, especially if you have a mower, for instance, that's wider than your tires and you can look back there and see that your, that your brush cutter is hitting the right spot. I think, and he said backing it into a garage. Little things, this has a horn two sets of headlights, and a rear work lighter standard. It's got the one set of rear remote standard. Then you've added some more remote hydraulics. You said this was from Summit? Yeah, the Summit uh, multiplier. I knew that Summit had a lot of cool hydraulic options, but this is really nice in that it, it just plugs directly into the, the uh, 
one set of remotes that was here and doubles it to two. And he controls that. He's got a dedicated lever for his one remote, which is a nice feature. And then if you want to switch between them, you have an electronic control up here. So this has kind of a small turnbuckle on it. These are the kind I'm not crazy about, but it's probably what you're going to find on most tractors this size. It's fine, not great. One thing that's different than mine, both sides, your three-point has height adjustments, whereas on a lot of tractors, you'll have one fixed and one adjustable. Summit kind of brands itself on thinking of all the little things that a tractor owner is going to want, think of after the fact. And an example of that is with the drawbar. So this comes with the tractor. You can buy this and add it to any tractor, but you can go behind your three-point arms and, and turn your three-point into a drawbar. But they also have two pins right here built into the tractor. Now my impression, what I see here, is that you could use either one of these as a drawbar pin, but also it comes with this drawbar, which slides in here and pins as a straight back draw bar. It's also, it's like you can put it in from the side and have an offset draw bar that's direct to the frame and stronger than this draw bar. The advantage to the draw bar here, obviously, is you can move it up and down, but you've gotta be careful about pulling with a draw bar that's above the center of gravity on your tires. Almost seems like overkill on the draw bar options, but it's better to have options than to not have options. Another cool feature, you've got trailer lights right here is one style of plug and it came with an adapter to go over to the typical round plug that you use on your trailer. Then you've got this extra light here. If your headlights are on, it's got a switch right here that turns that on and off. And then you've got a knob right here for your air ride seat. You turn that based on how many cheeseburgers you average per week. All right, I do think the air ride seat is nice. It's got some nice armrest. I like the location of the loader joystick. It operates very smoothly. I like the mirrors. I like everything about the way this is laid out. All of your levers are easy to access. It's got a, a nice emergency brake design that feels solid. Down here you've got your differential lock and your four-wheel drive. The seat slides forward and backward with the lever right here. And you've got the three-point drop on this side. It's a two-range hydrostat and it does have a mid-PTO. Summit doesn't have it out yet, but they are coming out with a mid-mount mower. And this tractor came with everything to run it. So you've already got the setting on the lever, and we went down and found where you connect your mid-PTO. They're also coming out with other tractor models and a cab option for this. I would say this is a well thought out ergonomic operator station. So just little things that a company does or does not think of. These are adjustable armrests. So you just turn a lever right here, sets the height on it. You know, that's not a big deal, right? But it's nice when they think of the little things. So I can't say if Summit makes a good tractor, but my first impression is positive. And if you're interested in knowing more about these from an unbiased source, check out Brian's channel. He'll have more videos on it. It was called McClure Made Outdoors. Great guy, he's a neighbor. I'm gonna be coming back in the next couple days and we're gonna be running a couple different stump grinders on this. Should be a better test. Appreciate you taking time to watch. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos and I'll see you next time.